Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Revitalizing Villa. This is episode number 21, and today we have, as you can see here, a game which, in theory, should be winnable. Middlesbrough away. Middlesbrough sat on bottom of the league. They won the league title in the championship last year ahead of us, of course. So there is a bit of history in this one. We're sat in 11th because I've played a few games. We're in February. January has been and gone. We've played a few games. We've also signed a few new players. Okay, let's start with the now. And Iosi Perez has left the club. Yeah, this happened. Um, he was complaining about first team football. Any time I've played him, he hasn't really played well. And you know what? I just thought I'm going to cut my losses on him. He's not going to get any better than where he is. That's cut my losses. And he's gone off to Bordeaux. Um, I lost I lost a million quid on him. Yeah. And he played nine times. No assists, no goals. He just wasn't very good for us, really. So, I'm not going to be upset about it. It's happened. Ozzy Perez, goodbye. But on to the ins then. And I've tried to focus on some young sort of players, um, regens in a way, um, that could sort of take this, this save to the next level. This is one of them. Pavlin Vasilev, a Bulgarian, 17 years of age. His stats aren't that great, but at 17, he's got some very, very good physicals. His determination is 19 as well. He's only going to get better. He is a five-star um, potential as well. I can't get his actual coach report up now because he's gone out on loan to Wickham. Um, I'm trying to get him some first-team football. But as a striker, he could be very good for us in a couple of seasons. At the moment, he's not. But in a couple of seasons, he could be good. Young striker number two. And say hello to Daniel Villela. Villela. Yeah, it's a weird name, but it's very good stats. So 13 finishing, um, lots of greens across the board. Again, determination 18. He could be a world beater. He's only 17 years of age, and we've picked him up for, for £500,000. I mean, that's great. That's great. And as you can see, he's already made a little bit of an impact. We'll get to that. Villela will be in the first team squad. I haven't loaned him out. I think he can play a part, you know, because he's got very good stats. Really good physicals. He's a pacey striker. Good penalty taker, heading's really good, and I say his finishing's not bad. I think he could be a good player for us. Another man come in and immediately gone back out on loan is Hussein Taskin. Centre midfielder, stats are pretty good. Again, 12 determination, not as good as the other guys, but it's, it's pretty good and he should push on. He's a five-star potential player, player again. I've gone for the five-star potential players um, and, I, and I've picked out a few to be fair. Passing's very good, 15 passing. 15 tackling he could be a defensive midfielder for us to be fair or Carrillo at least um, he's gone out on loan to Luton hopefully be able to get some first team football there and experience only brought in 425k so can't complain at that and Nen see Nen I mean it's a weird name I, I haven't signed him just because of his name to be fair his stats aren't bad for 18 years of age he's not the best of the bunch and he 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 will need to improve a lot more determination at five worries me a little bit his work rate's pretty good though um, potential ability of at least four stars so he could grow on to be something better I'm, I'm not sure about it it's a defensive option though for the future Nen Nen say hello to Mikel Sago and this guy 18 years of age Croatian lots of under 21 caps he's come in at a very very meagre 750,000 pounds and this guy looks like he could be the real deal to be fair He's at, he's at least a three and a half star potential, possibly five. It could be unlocked. 15 finishing already. 15 dribbling, 15 first touch. He is a very good player. 14 pace. He's a very strong player too. And acceleration ain't bad. You know what? This guy, this guy, is, he's going straight into the first team and he could be good. He could be good. But as I said, I have played on a few games. And you know what? I've actually played on quite a bit. I was just playing it late night and I thought you know what? I'm, I'm enjoying it let's go after those two losses in the last episode we've gone on a very good run a 1-1 at home to Everton we were a bit lucky I'm not gonna lie to you it was Cramerich the ex-Leicester man who had Everton in front midway for the second half but John Sutar saved us and got us a point with six minutes to go it was a sloppy performance we got another draw in the next fixture a 2-2 against West Brom and it was a weird sort of game really stay Steven Zuber who's since been transfer listed for some reason uh, got a double for them and a 93rd minute equaliser from Kodja. Sutar scored again two games in a row, just bizarre. But two draws and a third draw soon followed away at Bournemouth. Harry Arter's penalty was cancelled out by Lewis Baker. And I've started to think maybe all the draws were coming at once. But the FA Cup 
proved that we could win a game. 2-0 at home to Millwall, Kodja and Adoma wrapped it up in the first half. And a win against Stoke followed a goal from Jonathan Kodja, who's back in with the goals. 1-0 there, 1-0 away at Southampton. We were on a run and Daniel Villela scored on his debut, you know. I mean, the kid, the kid could be good for us. He scored the winner, very, very good to see. A 2-2 draw away at Liverpool was another late, late show for us. Mohamed Salah had them in front after six minutes. Luis Baker equalised with a wonderful effort, wonderful curling strike. Firmino had him in front at half-time, but Jonathan Codger's penalty in the last minute meant it was 2-2. It was Codger that took the penalties as Baker went off injured, and Baker's still out injured, unfortunately. And then, in the FA Cup fourth round, we beat Wolves four goals to two. Van Arnold, Chester, Codger, and another for Villela, who was, you know what, he's done pretty well, to be fair. Um, he's... he's, he's He's surprising me with how, how well he's done, to be honest with you. We're into the fifth round now, and that means that we play Tottenham. I don't think I'm going to whack it on camera, because I can see myself playing ahead a bit after this one again, just because I'm enjoying the save at the moment, and I want to further it a bit more. We are at a stage in this season where I don't think we're going to be in a relegation battle. We've played that well, but we aren't going to be in a challenge for Europe or anything like that. The season's going to sort of drift away, depending on what happens in that FA Cup tie, really. Um, so... I think we'll, we will find out. If we beat Tottenham and pull something off, the FA Cup is the way to go this year. But today, though, it is two Premier League games. It's Middlesbrough first, and it's a game that I really feel like we could win. And then we're looking to get some revenge against Leicester for that worst performance of the save a few episodes ago. So hopefully, we can bounce back. Okay, and this is the side it's going to play. It's the 4-1, 4-1, but I've pushed the wingers on ahead and I've put it on control, hoping to keep the possession, short to pass into. Um, it's Galini in goal, the back four of Bree, Chester, Suta and Van Arnold's pushed Brian out for a bit. Brian, his form wavered and Van Arnold's come in. It's nice to have the option, two very good left-backs. Hansen defensive midfield, of course. Bjarnason as the Carrillo, um, with Baker out, Bjarnason's taken his chance and he got two assists against Wolves, so he plays today. Mazala will be Hurahan, it's a Doma on the right, Morgan on the left, Lewis Morgan, and it's Kodja up front. The new strikers don't play today, they're both on the bench, Sego and Villela. I, what I want is to make my own sort of tactic for this save and this this has had some success for, so far and with a little bit of tinkering and a little bit of transfers here and there we could have some success with this so I am going to play it particularly today in a game that we should dominate we should control hopefully we will do that with the possession and on the mentality of control let's do this the Middlesbrough side when you look at it really it's not a Premier League setup and that's probably why they're struggling Brit Osama Long is on the bench for some reason because they've got Dong one this is the guy that used to play for Sunderland, I think. His stats ain't bad. He's £10 million. Pounds. They signed him this. They've signed him just now in January, I think. It's, it's going to be his first appearance for the club. I don't know, to be fair, about this one. An early goal would be nice. Codger can find Bjarnason on the edge of the box. Adoma to Morgan. Lewis Morgan, just wide. Just wide, but it's an early sighter for Lewis Morgan. Bamford, Sutar intercepts, but it's Desart onto it first. Given away to Van Arnold, but he can't find Morgan. Sloppy pass from him. Bamford, good interception. No, right, can we break now? Lewis Morgan has has gone down. Okay, he's just sort of stopped. He's got injured. Good. They're going to come forward with the gap left. It's Cyrus Christie to Bamford. To Bam... Oh, it's G-Dong 1. <laughs> it's G-Dong 1. I mean, it's all come from an injury. It's a complete freak. And we're 1-0 down to bottom of the league. Rafa Silva, he's just got Rafa. I mean, that's the entitlement of the modern-day footballer right there. Christie's cross. Jidong won. Oh, my God, he scored a second one. From what I remember, he's about he's about three foot tall. And he's beaten Chester and Suto in the air. I mean... OK. Half-time, then. Outplayed by bottom of the league and 2-0 down. Do you know what I said about trying to make a formation work for myself and not wanting to use that Neville Where's Prada? I'm using it. I'm, I'm using it. You know what? Where is your passion? Let's make some changes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get Morgan off. Villela on. Sego on for a Doma. They don't really fit it, but they're strikers and it works it better. And it's this is a formation that apparently just glitches the system. And I've saw some weird things to be fair when I've played with it. Oh, let's do it. Screw it. The madness will ensue now. Either that or they will score more we'll have to see z glass free kick to dobson to desart and here come Burrow coming forward now christy an overlapping fullback it doesn't suit us i've got to be honest with you desart to rafa desart shot is well wide sutar can bring it out of defense can you and can you find oh don't do that that's risky breeze got a bit of space on the right though 
It's not really a winger that I would expect to take on his man, but he's found Kodger. To Bjarnason. Can he find a pass? Van Arnold with a shot. Good block, but there's Villela on the rebound. We've pulled the goal back. It's his third of the season. Third since signing. Daniel Villela. And oh my God, I've just realised what, what has just happened. Oh my God. I am so glad that it's this guy that has done this. If you remember, the Deadpool rule was still in, in effect. We didn't have a new transfer or a transfer that I've signed on this save. Score for us on camera since I brought it in until now and it's the one that i don't really like saying daniel villela <sighs> not daniel villela anymore we have a new portuguese striker called deadpool and he scored for us can Bree pick out a pass here hurahan does codger has got a bit of space on the right can he find a cross he does do what a good interception that is and Middlesbrough might be able to break here dobson gives it away to van arnold and here's deadpool looking to pull the strings and and uh get us back into it. it's sego over the top oh my god that was a bad i mean He's finishing 15, 15 finishing, and, and, he, and he pulled out something like that. We've, we've made chances since the tactic change, though. We have made chances. Van Arnold will come off for Joe Bryan, just because the wing-backs are important on this system. And Bryan going forward will be a threat for us. He still classes as a winger on this game, by the way. I think he can play that f play that role quite well for us. Um, Sego and Codger on 6.3s, but the ratings don't matter too much with this. Um, we make chances. I don't think we're going to make another chance to get back into this one, though. Unless. Ooh, that was a bit close for them. Is there going to be another chance for us? I don't think there is. There's 20 seconds to go. It's over. It's over. We've got a Deadpool, so I'm not going to take uh, take too much resentment with this result. I mean, I am. Middlesbrough bottom of the league. And it's only their second win of the season. <laughs> Deadpool. Oh my god, Deadpool. I mean, to be fair, um, the regen faces are so bad on this game, that he kind of looks like Deadpool without his mask on. It is the 5-2-3 that's going to play this one. Um, before you guys look down on me, it's Deadpool up front, okay? It's Deadpool. Uh, Galini, Chester, Hansen, Sutar as the back four. Bree and Brian on the wing back positions. Inverted wing back, of course, for Joe Bryan. Hurahan as the ball winning midfielder. Bjarnason as the Mazzara. And it's Kodja, Sego, and Deadpool up front. Can Deadpool continue his good run of scoring? I, I, I hope so. I hope so. This could be a mad game, I'm telling you. This tactic, it just brings madness. In one of the games in between the episodes, I had one where I think it was. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember who I was even playing at this point, but they scored. Um like with half time about to happen they scored and then it was ruled out because apparently the half time whistle went just as they were just as they were scoring it was just complete madness it was a bug in the system where this tactic seems to cause it so anything could happen leicester have gone very defensive the 4141 irony schmeichel smith callas dawson simpson MacArthur, adrian silva all brighton indeedy mares and slomani it's the men you would expect to see from them they do have pontus jansen from leeds on the bench joe swift Jamie Vardy, Damari Gray, Christian Fuchs and Lazar Markovic who caused so much damage for us earlier in the season of course. Let the madness unfold. Deadpool. I keep looking at Deadpool and going, Deadpool. It's a throw in on the left. Brian will have a second. Oh, no he won't. He's just giving it away. Slomani should get there and he's brought it down away from uh, Chester. Was that Slomani? Oh, he's belted it in at the near post and the madness has started. That was one of the freakiest goals of the series so far. Just one lofted pass and number 14, is it Sutar or I think it's Conor Hurahan. Yeah, it is Conor Hurahan. Just, just simple. And then the finish at the near post is a rocket. It is a rocket. Galini probably beat a little too easily. Nine minutes in, we're 1-0 down. Can we get back into this one then? Deadpool loses out to Smith. This is going well. And Slomani's in over the top again. Slomani finishes again. It's 2-0. Okay. It's going to be one of these ones. It either goes really well, this tactic, or it goes really, really wrong. And this could be really, really, really wrong. Just one long ball again. It's the way the tactic is undone. Okay. I'm just, okay. <laughs> With a free kick for Leicester. Here's Mares. Bit of space for Riyad Mares to all Brighton. Can he find a cross? He does do. It's Slomani for a hat trick. And you know what? The striker should have done better. Right. Can we? But we can't. We can't build because Bjarnason's giving it away. They come flying forward again. 
Smith, Adam Smith, that the guy from Bournemouth, I think. Uh, Mares with a lot of space. Mares is crossed. Lamani's header. He does have a hat trick this time. It's a bullet header to Leicester. Are playing well, and oh, I feel like I've been here before. Or Brighton's corner then. Don't make it four. Don't make it four. They've made it four, and I'm starting to wonder how bad this can get. Brian's won it back though. Brian can't find anyone over the top, and Kalas back to Schmeichel. We just haven't been in the game at all. Haven't had a shot yet either, even on the stats. Mares flies past Bree. Mares, can he find a cross? There's one man to pick out. Hansen heads it away well. Then, okay then, what's going on here? Bree looking over the top for Deadpool, who will chase it. Can he find a cross? Deadpool's cross. Kalas clears and... I don't really know what's going on here. Bjarnason, Kodja, anything could be happening. Kodja's cross. It's Deadpool at the back post and Deadpool does score. Right then, game on, 4-1. Anything, anything can happen right now. We we could make the comeback of all comebacks here. Bjarnason picked out Kodja. I think it was a pass towards Brian, but Kodja's cross is on a plate for Deadpool, who says thank you very much. He's, uh, what, what was it, 16 heading, I think it was? Yeah, he'll take that. 4-1, Deadpool. Deadpool's on a roll. I mean, he's the only one on a roll for us at the moment, but he's on a roll. At half time then, the stats don't look pretty and the scoreline doesn't look pretty. It could get a lot worse. I'm going to bring on Van der Veel for Brees, just not having a good game. Um, and just leave it like that. We could make a comeback here. We could do. Not really, but aggressively again. Where is your passion? Can we have something in the second half, guys? Let's just try and win the second half. It's nil-nil. It's nil-nil again. That's what they used to tell you in Sunday League. And let's just try and win the second half now. I mean, I'd like something to happen at least, because it's going to be quiet. Hmm. And for that reason, I'm going to bring Morgan on for Sago, because um, Morgan, I think, can do it in, in in the front three, because he sticks wide and he gets crosses in it. It could lead to something for us. Defensively, we've just been shocking. That's the problem with the tactic. I think you have to have strong defenders to be able to play it, and we haven't really, so we're very hit and miss with this tactic at the moment. Very much missed today, as you can tell. Four minutes to go. We're going to bring on one more. Let's get Sutar off. And we've got no centre-back that can come on. So, so Van Arnold's going to play it. <laughs> Why not? What can go wrong at this point? Or what What can get worse at this point is probably the worst thing to say. Oh, Brighton. Van Arnold with a header away. He's a beast of a centre-back. Oh, Brighton again. MacArthur. They're going to score, aren't they? Oh, Deadpool's winning back. And <laughs> all of a sudden, Morgan to Codger. Codger's all on his own. Morgan's trying to get forward. It is Jonathan Codger. He's put it wide. I don't know what I was getting excited for. It's still 4-1. It would have meant nothing. Should be the full-time whistle. There it is then. Two very, very weird, weird games today. My own fault with the tactic, I suppose, this time. It could have gone either way. It's gone against us. The Middlesbrough one was disappointing too. At least we've got Deadpool. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of this episode. And yeah, say, it's a, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, that This never worth prior one. It's very hit and miss. You have to have the right players for it. And I don't think I've got the right defence. I don't know. That's all I've got to say on that, really. Um, Deadpool, though. We've got Deadpool. We've got a Deadpool. And what do you think about the new transfers? Deadpool is working out, at least. So, you know what? Until next time, we'll see what's going on with the FA Cup. If we can beat Tottenham, who knows? Who knows? And then we will come back and find out what this season really has in store for us. Until next time, 